It is Thursday, December 8th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday puzzle today, which means some sort of interesting or complex theme. And I can see, actually, through the gauzy privacy veil here, what looks like the letter J spelled out, or maybe a hook. Well, it's spelled out, but written out. Um, so we'll have to see. I don't know. Uh, in any case, I don't have a huge amount of time today, so this might be a relatively brisk episode, of, I guess, depending on the difficulty of the crossword. And this relatively brisk edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Ryan Eaves, Connor O'Neill, Cam Tron, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Shullmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them benefactors of The Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to join their ranks in, as a benefactor and get The Daily Solve, let's check the crosses mug, if you can see right here. Um, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve or in a link in the description field underneath the video. And if you would like to become a patron at any level and get the daily solve um, videos, all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week, you can find that at uh, the same link in the description field. And thank you to everybody who has become a patron at any level. I do very much appreciate it. So thank you. It keeps this whole channel sustainable. And, um, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server in a link under there as well, and do subscribe to the YouTube channel if you uh, are enjoying these videos. All right, so let's get right on to the puzzle. This is a Thursday construction by Grant Thackeray, who has constructed, I think, around a dozen puzzles for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Hankerings could be yens, maybe. You have a hankering for something, a yen for it. Um, but... There are probably other options. Let's look at the downs. Shag, okay, it probably is. Shaggy horned beast looks like a yak to me. And word with twin or grin, an evil grin or an evil twin. An evil twin may have an evil, an evil grin, in fact. It's all good. No problem? Um, this, this, some of these crosses don't look great, so maybe not. But let's look here. State. Uh, to state something is to avert it, to, to claim it to be true. And an Aucklander, e.g., is a, is a Kiwi, someone from Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, New Zealanders, Kiwis. It's all good. Hmm. New. What would that be? Pandemic cause of 2009. Maybe, do I have something wrong here? Literary character with an eponymous chain of seafood restaurants. Literary character. Um, I don't know. Literary character. Who? What is a seafood chain named? I mean, there's the sort of Bubba Gump shrimp restaurants, and the, that's a character from um, Forrest Gump, the film. But literary character. Oh, Long Long John Silver. That's a fish. Is that a sort of fried fish restaurant, I think? Long, no. Literary character. Long Johns? This doesn't look right at all. It's all good. Shaggy Horned Beast, a new? Um, that's funny, we have a new and a yak. Swine flu, surely this is swine flu. Pandemic cause of 2009, I didn't really think about it. Swine, oh, a vow, not a verb, but a vow, okay. You stated something, you avowed it. Oh, there we go, all right. I was thrown off by that ambiguity. A vow is probably a closer match anyway. So it's all good. No worries. There we go. All right. And big name and contact lens care. Renew. I've seen that, that brand of contact lens uh, fluid. Time in the dog days of summer. Oh, and then here we have, oh, about seven or eight weeks before five down. Okay. So this is a compound clue. Something June, mid-June. And then what is about seven or eight weeks before five down? I 
I mean, mid-April, but uh, what does that mean? Um, let's keep looking around. What can precede heartbeat or nutshell? In a heartbeat or in a nutshell? Blue group. Um, the Democratic Party? Or maybe the Democratic National Committee? We're referring to political parties in the U.S.? 365 giorni, so that would be um, days in Italian, and then uh, anno, a single year, uh, would be 365 to them. That must be right. I wouldn't have known giorni off the top of my head, <laughs> to be totally honest with you. Um, yeah, what is that? An extravagant one might have a swimming pool, a, a dacha, a sort of... Russian holiday home? That would be a weird way to clue this. Oh, this is May and it's mid-July, not mid-June. I don't know enough about the dog days of summer to know exactly when they're said to occur. Right, so, oh, so a yacht, a yacht. It might have a swimming pool, okay. Um, that wouldn't even have occurred to me, but I suppose, right, a yacht could have a swimming pool. Um, okay, so talking twos are earfuls. And Blank Cat, old comic strip that taught teens manners. I don't know, I've probably seen this before, but I'm not sure off, offhand. Sound at a fireworks show. Oz? Sort of sounds of amazement? What a monkey has that an ape doesn't a tail. So this is Oz with two A's rather than two H's. You never know. You always have to sort of feel it out with the crosses. And blank cat. Etta, maybe? Country that lacks an official language informally. Um, I guess the United States does not have an official language. I mean, the, the de facto official language is English, but the U.S., the United States does not in fact have a legally recognized official language. Okay, blank cat, etta cat, I suppose, and dunderhead, an ass, a dunderhead, an ass. Okay, so John Deere logo animal, a stag, I think. There's sort of a rearing, I don't know if that's the terminology used for stags, but uh, kind of a rearing stag in the logo. And John Deere is a farm, farm equipment manufacturer. Okay, nickname for Gotham City's protector. So Gotham City is the name given to um, Batman's home in comic books. So the bat, I guess, maybe? Is that, does that work? Just based on this T, that's my suspicion. And without the T, I would have simply put in Batman, but I guess, I guess that's not a nickname. I suppose that's that character's actual name. I mean, the alter ego's name anyway. It's a trap. Maybe this isn't the bat. Hmm. It's a trap. Oh, although this, well, let me put this back. Right, it is It is this, because it's a trap is not, it's not an exclamation that means it's a trap. If it were that, it would be in exclamation points to indicate it's being stated, it's being uh, spoken aloud, but it's not. And when we have these unquoted exclamation point clues, what this means is that it's describing the answer. It's, it's being said about the answer rather than being a, de a definition or synonym of it. So, um, a web is an example of a kind of trap. So it's a trap, that web, it's a trap. Snooze fest, a yawner maybe, is that a thing people say? It was a real yawner, it was a real snooze fest. I don't know that I've heard it, but I could imagine it being said pretty easily. Expensive shipping option. I'm not sure about that. What about this? It glows orange red when placed in an electric field. A neon bar? One of women and little women. There's Amy and Joe and Meg. Right, so that's from the book Little Women and Number of Associated Films. Um, expensive shipping options. Same day shipping is expensive. Oh, oh, neon gas. Oh, okay. Right, fair enough. It glows orange red when placed in an electric field. Neon gas. Okay. And that's why we have neon lights, I guess. So there we go. Most itsy bitsy, the teeniest. 
Apologies for my incredibly croaky voice today. <laughs> I usually it goes away in a minute or two um, when I'm doing speaking this much as I am on one of these videos, but doesn't seem to be today. Okay, uh, what was that? Um, and blank. Oh, right. So, sorry, I didn't really notice we had a dash. This is presumably related to the theme, but we don't yet know what it means. It could be a continuation of this clue, seafarers. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it were because this doesn't look long enough to have a plural answer that means seafarer, but let's just, let's keep looking around. Film production company founded by Steven Spielberg, Amblin. Um, Amblin Entertainment is Steven Spielberg's production company and uh, na named after an early film of his. Rapper Biggie Smalls is a rapper. And uh, what was that? Oh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mariners? Oh, and the eye. It looks like we have... Oh, Long John Silver. That's why I was confused. And, and I wasn't at Long, long John's because I was thinking, does it share, you know, like Long John's underwear? I don't know. I was trying to think, why would it have an S? But I just couldn't think of anything else to put there. But it's Long John Silver and the eye is being, I guess, in the in this puzzle being obscured by this particular black cell. So I wonder, that'll probably be, be well, although, Jundir logo, animal, stag. Oh, and there's no, there is no dash there. So it's not symmetrically disposed, the little, the dash that, or the, the cell that represents a missing letter in the theme. But anyway, mariners, oops, mariners are seafarers. So that goes in there. An, a harbinger is an omen of things to come. And, oh, what was that? Why can't I still see this? Something me? arrived, came to a conclusion, arrived at it. Suave and sophisticated is urbane. Urbane sort of means that. Um, urbanity, you know, sort of, I don't know, adultness in a way, I guess. It's not exactly a great, great definition. Bail, so to speak, leave. I'm going to bail on this party. I'm going to leave. What an actor studies. Oh, an actor studies his or her lines. So arrived is came in, not came to. And then Hacker the Horrible's dog is Snurt. So this is a newspaper comic strip. Haven't encountered that before. Um, so there we go, Snurt. That's the name of that character. Not universal knowledge, I wouldn't think. Um, so it's useful to get it at the end of these crosses where they're easiest to solve. Uh, okay, so have we seen any other... I don't think we've seen any other um, dashes yet. Or at least I don't remember having seen any. Not here. Not there. Not there. Are there any others? I guess I could scroll through. Oh, here's one. Oh, right. It's the same place. Is it just that? That's it. That's all it is. Oh, that's so interesting. Strange. Uh, Roman equivalent of the Greek Helios. Is it Eos? Come on, move it. Toddler's boo-boo. And owie blokes are... lads, the blokes, the lads. I mean, that's the kind of thing we hear all the time in the UK, which I assume blokes is referring to. It's referring to British English. Um, it certainly ends with an S. Oh, actually, if it were, if it were lads, it could, this could be soul. That, right. Okay. Yeah. Soul and he, and Helios, not Eos. Sorry about that. Beginning or end for Alexa. I bet this is a schwa. So the Alexa in English, when you have that A, for instance, and you pronounce it with that kind of, uh, rather than, you know, Alexa or Alexa or something like that. But the sort of elision of that vowel down into a kind of just a little blah, little kind of extra thing there. Alexa sort of just falls off, falls out of your mouth. Okay, I, there, there's definitely a much better linguistic explanation for this concept, I'm sure. Um, hit C CBS series that despite its name, was filmed primarily in California. I wonder if this is one of the CSIs. CSI, there was a CSI Miami, pretty sure, and that would fit. Was there also a CSI Vegas? It was probably called CSI Las Vegas. Um, expressed, said, you said something, you expressed it. You avowed it, perhaps. Come on, move it, shake a leg. And each is, I'm not sure. 
Mega Millions is a, is a lottery brand. And misnomer for the character Fritz in the original Frankenstein. Oh, Igor, I guess. Right, okay. I remember reading, I remember when I was a child, I tried to read Dracula and Frankenstein. And I think both of them are epistolary novels, so they, they're written through letters and diary entries and things. I think, I think I'm remembering that about both of them. And I found that incredibly sort of off-putting and um, I just couldn't, uh, there was something about, about it. I just, you know, just didn't, didn't understand that conception. I mean, I understood it technically, but I didn't like get it, if you know what I mean. And I just couldn't, couldn't get through those books. Okay. Scuttled. Um, what is that saying? No go. The sort of the operation has, we've scuttled the operation. It's no go. The operation is scuttled. It's no go. I'm just trying to think of a way we, a part of speech can match. I guess you'd say, yeah, the operation is scuttled. It's no go. I guess that works. I think that's probably right. Each, oh, I want this to be a pop or something. Double eagle plus three, double eagle plus three. This is obviously golf, so it must be par. I don't know exactly how that would be calculated. Um, it's a double eagle. I mean, maybe double eagle is by definition three under par. So a double eagle plus three is par. That's my guess if I had to guess about how that works. So shake a leg, a lop. What does that mean? Peg leg? Shake a peg. I'm, I'm wondering if this is related to this mariner's thing and dealing with the sort of pirate has a peg leg. Maybe this is our missing eye or something. The letter I, I mean, I, and that a peg leg is kind of just a straight bar like an eye. There's something going on here. I don't quite understand it. Oh, but look at this one with an eye patch, hook hand and peg leg as represent eye patch. This is the eye patch the eye patch and the peg leg. So is this shake a peg or shake a leg? It must be shake a peg because otherwise a pop doesn't work for each. So, sorry, I didn't write this in. So pirate and a, oh, and I completely didn't even notice this hook thing that I observed before even starting the crossword and then just completely did not paid no attention to it all. So a hook hand flush, I guess flush is a poker hand. Wow. Okay. <laughs> What a funny, goofy theme. Uh, so it's sort of three different little mechanics, each of which could be its own um, crossword theme if extended out to have several examples. But uh, in this case, we have a little sort of grab bag, maybe to kind of represent the, I don't know, unkempt nature of the classical literary pirate. Ponied up. If you ponied up, you paid your tab or something like that uh, at a bar. Impedes is hinders, maybe. And you might see snow when it's disrupted. No signal? No, 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 no. It doesn't make any sense. You might see snow when it's disrupted. It looks like signal, doesn't it? Hurdles for aspiring DAs, the LSATs, the law school admissions tests, as I think I finally remember. Like Blade Runner and Fahrenheit 451, those are dystopian. No, uh, well, not novels. Fahrenheit 451 is a novel and Blade Runner is a film, of course. Although I guess Blade Runner itself is based on a, a short story. Okay, top blank, top tier. I don't know why that would be exclaimed in that manner. Top. Hmm. So clever. Aha, or ah, or... Beauty that's only skin deep for short. A tattoo, maybe? It's literally the depth of your skin. Um, and it could be beautiful. Like Louis Armstrong singing, throaty. I, I love Louis Armstrong's voice. It is such a, a unique, just w wonderful voice. Um, no pun intended given he sang What a Wonderful World. Uh, I guess my, <laughs> like Louis Armstrong singing and my delivery of crossword commentary today is how this could be clued. Uh, butcher birds are shrikes. And grave letters are R.I.P. Rest in peace. Winter coat is rhyme, a sort of frost rhyme. Okay, so what do we have going on here? So clever. I guess it is aha. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, top that you might challenge somebody. 
And an absolute dump is a sty. It's a total pig sty. It's an absolute dump. So Grateful Dead founding member Bob. Oh, I actually don't know this. I never really got particularly into the Grateful Dead, so I don't, I don't really know very much about them. So I'm, yeah, I just don't know. Cocoon is... Um, why don't I see this? It could be a, a verb or a noun to cocoon yourself inside a kind of protective you know, shell or something, or it could be obviously the noun for the thing created, but I'm not sure. One who's far from stone-faced. An emoter, someone who demonstrates their emotions, they externalize their emotions very visibly. Fix a hole in a way. To sew, you could, you know, sew, sew clothing and repair a hole. Is that what we're getting at here? I'm not sure. What about this? Nothing to report. No news. There we have it. And order to attack is order to attack. Go on or something. One getting the talk, say a tween, maybe. The sort of birds and the bees talks from parents could come around, what is that, age 11 and 12, I suppose, as a tween. You might see snow when it's just, oh, TV signal. There we go. Right. Okay. This is, is this still, is it? I suppose, right, if you were still receiving um, television signal non-digitally, which I suppose lots of people uh, do, and you see snow, that kind of static monochrome um, pattern on the screen when you're not getting a, a proper signal, right? That's a very clever clue. Okay, modern payment method. Venmo is a payment service and app. And Bob Weir, I guess, W-E-I-R, order to attack... I can't see what this is. Cocoon, cocoon is in, you can encase yourself. Oh, right. It's uh, another bit of a little bit of misdirection potentially. So this isn't saying an order to attack. It's saying to order someone or something to attack someone or something else. So to order to attack is to sick on that thing. So to order to, order to attack that guy is to sick on that guy, your dog, for instance, or something like that. And there we go. That was the Thursday puzzle. So not a brutally difficult Thursday puzzle as far as the fill goes, I don't think. But we had a funny scattered theme. I, I kind of like it and think that it is in some way appropriate to pirates, that it's this kind of mishmash. And in fact, they're even sort of, yeah, I think they're roughly anatomically properly positioned. If you imagine an eye is up here, then so here's the head, an arm reaching out, and here's the hook hand, the flush hand, and then down here is our peg leg, um, which translates our shake a peg. It's funny that this wasn't, there was nothing in this clue or anything relating to this clue that acknowledged that we needed to change shake a leg to shake a peg or represent it that way. Um, and it was, yeah, it was definitely the each a pop that, that made it seem like that must be the case. Okay. Uh, very nice. So a funny, charming little uh, grab bag of a theme. And this, it is, like I was saying, these are, each one of these is a completely self-sufficient New York Times style crossword theme that could be explored in its own grid. You could have a full grid full of, you know, hook hand or equivalent things. Um, so a glass eye, for instance, that kind of thing, maybe. And you, then you'd have a word that is a kind of glass in a circular shape, that sort of thing you could have. Or then obviously simply replacing a letter inside of a of a cell, in this case, the eye patch. You could have either quite a few eye patches or other things that refer to letters being covered up in some way. Um, and then a peg leg, kind of, I guess that's sort of similar to the, the the hooked hand thing, but but I guess with this one, you would do it additionally by changing the word that it's part of to, you know, to be a sort of punnier version or to, to refer to, you know, to sort of be grammatically correct, but no longer idiomatically accurate as in, as in this case. Um, anyway, there we go. Uh, and we just had a little taster. <laughs> if you are um, new to the New York Times crossword and new to their themes, then here's a, uh, here's a little example of the sorts of things you might find. It was no yawner. And I don't have time to delve into all of the comments, read through all the comments, but I I, I, yesterday I noticed one uh, clue that I did, or sorry, one comment that I did want to read because it dealt with 
what I was wondering about out loud, which was the derivation of those, uh, of the foreign language words and phrases from yesterday's puzzle. So let's look at this from Srinx32, who says, old timer is indeed a German word pronounced the English way. It just means a car of old times. So there we go. Not related really to the English word, except that English is a Germanic language. And obviously there's etymological overlap. Number two, gymnasium is originally ancient Greek and denoted a place of physical education. It has found its way into many modern languages, either as a place either as a place of sports or as of education. One of the German secondary school forms is also called gymnasium, for example. So there we go. That, that makes sense. And that's what I would have guessed. And it, I mean, it does seem like an ancient Greek word. Three, the reason why concurrence can have seemingly opposing meanings is because in its original language, Latin, it literally, literally means to run together. But the word does not make it clear whether together means towards or with each other, as for the English concurrence, or in competition with each other as for the French word and the German concurrence. Uh, that's, that's very interesting. It makes perfect sense. Four, the plex in multiplex comes from the Latin verb plecter, which means to plaid or to wattle. So it's a surprisingly accurate description of plywood as a material. And Alan Eaton adds about the plex. The plex is the same as in complex, as in something that comes with many folds or many layers. And then five, uh, going back to Sphinx 32, in French, the word semestre was used in the 18th century to denote the length and leave, the length of leave for an army officer. I'm not entirely sure how it made its way into the Swedish language, but it may have been during the Swinch, French and Swedish alliance in the Thirty Years' War, although that took place in the 17th century, and I don't know if semester was used by the military uh, in that time period. And Alan Eaton again points out about semester. Semester comes from Latin semestris, which means lasting six months. It's a combination of sex for six and menses for month. And um, Alan Eaton also adds an explanation of the word skosh, which comes from Japanese. It's a rare word in that regard. Most Japanese loanwords in English refer to something from Japanese culture, like anime, obi, samurai, or sensei. So yes, that is, I, and I have seen that, um, that derivation before. Um, I think it came from U.S. military uh, members service uh, stationed in Japan. So that, that's how the loan word made its way to the English language. And there were some other comments about those etymologies, but that was, those, uh, that was a pretty good overview, I thought. And uh, thank you so much to um, th those with that uh, etymological expertise and knowledge for your comments. And thank you to you for watching the video. I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday puzzle when we uh, dispense with these wacky themes and begin our two days of themeless puzzles. Hope you join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.